Norseman, I need to ask you about Torgor. Something's not right with him. He isn't ill, is he? I don't think so. But according to Lady Karen, he seems to have lost his appetite. Which is certainly a new development. She says he's hardly been touching his bones of late, and she believes it may have something to do with what happened at Rosalith Castle. Hmm. I rather think she might be right, though not about his appetite. All canids are instinctively inclined to crack open bones for the rich marrow that resides within, and I see no reason why a frost wolf should be any different. Accordingly, I suspect it is not a lack of appetite that afflicts Torgal, but a surfeit of it. If we assume that his newfound magics require additional nourishment to sustain, it may well be that the bones Lady Karen is accustomed to providing are no longer sufficient. Frost wolves, after all, habitually prey upon far larger animals, whose bones may yield altogether different nutrients. As to where one might find a suitable substitute, some antelopes that graze the meadows of eastern Rosaria have been known to grow to a size more than double that of their lesser cousins. I don't recall ever seeing any that large. And little wonder. The oldest and largest such creatures rarely leave the safety of the highlands for fear of predators. The last elder antelope sighting I recall hearing about took place near Cressida, and that was long before the village was abandoned. Even so, it seems like a good place to start. Good hunting, Clive. She was building a ship. Clive, did you get my letter? That's why I'm here. Hideaway may be slightly behind in its payment to certain lenders, and it may be my fault. But I swear to the goddess, I thought I had the numbers square. Sadly, that square turned out to be more of a circle. Zero, you might say. I can straighten it out, I swear, but it's going to take some time, and... I'm going to need help keeping it from Otto. Be late for that, I would say. There you are! What a surprise! So let me get this straight. You forget to pay our lenders what they're due, and instead of coming straight to me, you get Clive to come to you. And I hope he'll dig you out of the hole you've dug for yourself. Clive, the man in charge of the place you've been cheerfully trying to bankrupt. And you thought this was a cunning plan? Why? Well, who needs paying? Oh, just Martha. And the dame. And, well, Lady Karen. <laughs> but only 500 talents. We owe three of our most trusted friends five million gil. Each. Five million. Each. They lent us the bulk of the money we used to rebuild the hideaway, you see, and, well, I, I must have made some sort of... oversight. <sighs> Those ledgers were my responsibility, and it was my decision to entrust them to you. This is my fault. Do we have that much to hand? I can always ask my uncle. No, we don't. And no, you won't. We've lightened Lord Rossfield's purse enough. After the King's ransom we had off him, he deserves better than to see our begging bowl. Besides, we'll need to learn to stand on our own if we're gonna make this work. All right. But that doesn't mean you have to shoulder the burden yourself. Is there anything I can do to help? 
There might be. How do you fancy taking these to Martha and the Dame? Rocks. Rocks, he says. Worth a thousand talents apiece, these are. A little something Sid and I set aside for when times got lean. And I reckon 15 million in overdue debt probably qualifies. I just hope our associates' eyes are a bit more discerning than yours. I'm sure they will be. Mm. Should be me making the rounds, really. But you know how it is with this place. Orders to bark, asses to wipe and all that. I know. Which is why I don't mind going in your place. Go. Do you know why I only gave Master Clive here two star rubies? Because... You'd rather Lady Karen killed me. Because I'd rather Lady Karen killed you, yes. Well, I suppose this is goodbye then. Don't worry. I'm sure Karen will understand. Really? Do you think so? No, I don't. We weren't expecting you. I wasn't expecting to be here, but it seems we still owe you a considerable amount of coin for your help with our rebuilding efforts. And though I doubt it's what you were expecting, we were hoping you'd take this as payment. A star, Ruby? I can't accept this. It's worth at least twice what you owe me. More if you can find yourself the right buyer. Think of the difference as interest. Interest? If word got out I charged that much, no one would ever borrow from me again. Anyway, why are you the one here asking me about this? I'd have expected Otto. Bit much sending the Lord Marquis out to sell your debts, isn't it? The old goat working himself to death again. Something like that. Most days I think he's the only reason the hideaway's still standing. Same as always, eh? Back when the place was nothing but a twinkle in the eye of a recently retired Lord Commander, word is he was the first one Sid reached out to. Probably knew that without his strong arm and level head, the idea would never get off the ground. Sid may have been the face of the hideaway, but Otto's always been the backbone. And when Sid passed away, we were all worried that would be the end of it that Otto would just give up. His death was hard on everyone. But it must have hit Otto hardest of all. But he didn't give up, did he? Quite the opposite, in fact. If I recall, he was the one who nominated you as Sid's replacement and rallied the rest around you. I reckon what he saw in Sid, he saw in you too. And don't we all? Doesn't hurt that you're half as stubborn and twice as handsome, neither. That, and you keep good company. <laughs> I suppose I do.
Come on. Faster. Certainly quiet. If I were a giant antelope, it would seem like just the place. I doubt we'll find one bigger than that. You hungry, Toggle? Will it be enough, I wonder? I say that answers my question. Which means we owe the lawsmen our thanks. I'm just a big puppy, aren't you? A very big puppy. I do know you can take that with you, Toggle. Lady Karen will be relieved to hear you've got your appetite back. Come on, boy. Let's go. Fly, Ambrosia.
I can walk from here. Your reign is over. Now to collect the ash. I should probably have brought a bucket. This looks like the stuff. Let's see if there's any more. That should do it. If a wine needs more than this, he can fetch it himself. There's talk. That the Glassgate flood has finally spread. Did you hear? The gates to heaven. I want to see you. What am I going to do without sweet water and oil of talc? My lady, I come bearing gifts. Gifts? Whatever is the occasion. Oh, my. Clive, you really have outdone yourself. Otto asked me to give it to you. To settle the hideaway's dead with the veil. And to compensate you for the time it took us to do so. Oh, you disappoint me, Clive. I thought you might finally be warming to me. Tell Otto he can keep his baubles. I tried to tell him as much the first time around. The man owes me nothing. Nor does the hideaway. My contribution to the restoration effort was made freely and willingly. It was the least I could do. You once told me Sid did you a kindness. I'd like to do the same. Please, accept it. For my sake. And for Otto's. For all of us. For all you've done. <sighs> it is rather fetching. Isn't it? Very well. <laughs> Otto is lucky to have you, Clive. I doubt anything could ever replace his son. But you and the others at the hideaway 
are the closest thing he has to family. Otto had a son. Long ago, yes. Sid told me Otto lost him when he was just a boy, and blamed himself for not being able to stop it. I don't know how it happened, whether there was anything he could have done, but it was clear that it weighed heavily on him. I didn't know. How could you have? I doubt anyone did. Besides Sid, I've never met a man more keen to bear his sorrows in stoic silence. An ill habit, given that both have always been surrounded by friends desperate to help them. <laughs> I'm beginning to see that. Go will want to know the stones were delivered. If he's still with us. People take notice of wealthy men. Shouldn't be too hard to track down Karen's collector. The same Drake's fang is gone. The whole mother crystal gone. What are we gonna do? Calm yourself. My reputation will be ruined. Ruined! Calm yourself, Lord Ignac, I beg of you before you do yourself a mischief. Pardon the intrusion, but... Out! Get out! I paid for these rooms so I wouldn't be disturbed. Leave me be! Please, allow me to apologize. His lordship is going through a difficult time, and he's never been fond of guests arriving unannounced. Radim! Get rid of the filthy oaf this instant! Very good, Lord Ignac. Would you mind stepping outside for a moment? I'm sorry if I've caused you any trouble. That? No, no, no. That's just how his lordship is. Though the morning's events have left him somewhat... fractious. He has been dispossessed of his luggage, you see. The thieves also made away with a considerable amount of coin. Coin the innkeeper will soon be keen to collect. I don't suppose a certain blade was among the stolen items. A single-edged sword. It was purchased from a merchant friend of mine. Ah, you know Lady Karen. Yes, I'm afraid it was. Then I'll retrieve Lord Ignac's luggage. But I have one condition. You have but to state it. You are welcome to anything that is within my power to grant. I want an audience with Lord Ignac. A few minutes should be enough. Then I'll be on my way. A condition I would be a fool to refuse. Of course, you shall have your audience. I don't suppose you saw where the thieves went? I did not, no. Though some discreet inquiries made on his lordship's behalf mean that I know where you might find them. The bandit's bed. Every ill-gotten coin in Dalamal is said to pass through that disreputable corner of the Valcroy. And that's where I'm heading. I shall speak to Lord Ignac in your absence, and arrange for an audience upon your triumphant return. That will be very kind of you. Farewell, and best of luck.
Fly Ambrosia. Company. Come on, lads, let's tear the bastard's head off. This must be Ignac's luggage. Nothing seems to be damaged. All right. Let's get it back to Dalamel. I hear I have you to thank for the return of my effects. What shall I call you, my good man? Wyvern. Glad to make your acquaintance. A formidable name, indeed. Well, Wyvern, I appear to be in your debt. Redeem here tells me you wished for an audience. Is that all? A few moments of your time should suffice, yes. You're a peculiar fellow, Wyvern. All right, speak. A master wyvern was wondering if you could tell him about a certain single-edged sword you recently acquired. Oh, a true work of art, that one. Karen drove me hard on the price, but I would have sold her Radim here to get my hands on that sword. It was made in the Outer Isles, far beyond the Twins, and is used exclusively by the practitioners of a unique school of swordsmanship. They believe no combat should ever exceed a single strike and hone their blades to such perfection that none ever does. Each sword is made for that one perfect stroke, and for that stroke only. They crack upon a second blow. There's a brutal sort of beauty to it, really. But how do they hone such an edge? Ha ha ha, fine question. Why, they use a whetstone, of course. Whetstones, rather. A whole array of them, ranging from the coarse to the fine. 10,000 licks with the sharpening stone, then 10,000 more. But it is the final stone which lends the blade its legendary sharpness. 
a mineral quite foreign to this great realm of ours. And that is the key. The secret ingredient. Why, when it occurs to me that my little lecture is hardly equal to services rendered, take this, together with my regards. The very stone of which I spoke, far rarer among collectors than even the blade itself, and a far more fitting payment. Thank you. Pardon the intrusion, my lordship. However, it is long past time we prepared ourselves to depart. <gasps> so it is. I am locked in bitter competition with a rival collector of curiosities. I am one step ahead of the unscrupulous scoundrel, but he is hard at my heels. Are there are many other collectors out there. Too many to count, but only one do I consider my nemesis. Lord Byron Rosfield, and is a perennial thorn in my side. <laughs> I can imagine. Farewell, Wyvern. May our paths cross again. Radim, we mustn't dawdle. I think his lordship is rather taken with you, Master Wyvern. Thank you again for your assistance. Coming, my lordship. I'll be right there. Trust Uncle Byron to find such an interesting rival. Now, let's see what Blackthorn makes of this whetstone, shall we? Told me she was building a ship. Goat. Still alive, I see. So Lady Karen accepted the ruby. Ah. Oh, about that. Uh, I tried my best. But she was just too stubborn to take it. She threw it right back in my face, in fact, and told me I could stick my stupid stone where the sun don't shine. Karen refused payment. I hope it wasn't something I said. I'm sure you were as tactful as ever. Let me see what I can do. Oh, wonderful. I hope you have better luck than I did. some help. All right there, Sid. How's that hunt for the bomb ash going? I have it here. That's the stuff. And plenty of it, too. Enough to keep the Olympic bubbling away for a good old while. You're a gent, Sid. Let nothing say otherwise. Right then, let's get this contraption up and running. on the Limbic, and it works just like the Chief said it would. <sighs> Very impressive. <laughs> Says the man who cut down a burning boulder. Speaking of which, I still haven't returned a favor. There's no need. The good it will do for the hideaway is reward enough. 
Don't be silly. Why don't you let me take a look at that bag of yours? The one you keep your potions in? Reckon I could work some magic on that, huh? What kind of magic? Well, we happen to have isolated a substance in our test run of the Alembic that I reckon will make even the toughest lever supple as anything. Thought we might use it to breathe new life into old boots and the like. Save the hideaway a few, Gil. But I reckon if we slap a bit on your bag, it'll loosen it up enough for you to squeeze in a bottle or two more. Well, it can't hurt to try, I suppose. That's the spirit? Leave it with me. I'll only be a mo. Well? What do you reckon? It certainly feels more... Of flexible. Right? Told you. Thank you. I think. No, no. Thank you. For supporting Mid and the rest of us in our endeavors. Without you, we'd never have been able to discover wonders like that stuff I rubbed on your bag. And I'm telling you, there's plenty more where that came from. Sorry for the wait, but hopefully you'll agree it was worth it. You learned something about our sword then? I did better than that. I... a whetstone? Yes. But not one you'll find anywhere in Valestia. finish on the grinding wheel. <laughs> One hit and all done, eh? Might not be so bad if all you ever fought were duels. <laughs> good luck on a battlefield. Your second opponent would be your last, no matter how good you were. Even so, is there some way it could be used to give the Curse Breakers an edge? I think so, yeah. With this whetstone and the right kind of steel, I could probably even make a twin of the play to rattle me. But there'd be no replacing this little rock once I worn it down to a sliver. I reckon we get a dozen swords from it, if that. Swords that the Curse Breakers wouldn't know how to wield, probably, and that would see them through a single fire piece. Nah, no point trying to copy that thing. Be about as much use as a wax anvil. But finishing our blades with a whetstone this fine? Now that's something to consider. And what's finer than fallen masonry, eh? Or more hard wearing, for that matter? Just imagine it. Good Valisthean steel, with an edge as sharp as any found in the Outer Isles. I won't make a copy, nah. I'll make something much better. I'm sure the Curse Breakers will be delighted. Just... don't push yourself too hard. <laughs> don't you worry about me, Sunshine. I'll be working day and night since I was half your age, and I'll still be here when you're long gone. Hey. Thanks, Clive. I mean it. 
I owe you one. August too. It's good to know someone's looking out for me. You'll be happy to hear you said that. And I'll see that my debt to you's paid. First new blade I make's got your name on it. You come and find me when you've got the materials. All right. I will. What do you need? So, what'd it be? Anything else? Lady Karen. Goad tells me you weren't happy with our offer. Would you prefer the debt was repaid in coin? What debt? I don't recall lending any of you lot me hard-earned gill. I may have tossed a talent or two in the Hardaway's coffers, but those were donations, and you can hardly call it charity if you go asking for it back. Of course not. But one good turn deserves another, and our circumstances have changed. Surely you wouldn't shun the gratitude of a pauper who happened to have become a prince. Oh, so you're a prince now, are you? Fine. But I'm selling it and taking what I'm owed, then you're getting the rest whether you like it or not. Where'd you even get this? A decent trader might nab a thousand talents for a star ruby. A canny one, meanwhile, might claim it were nicked from the belt of Sid the Outlaw himself and ask twice as much. Might be I already have a buyer in mind. Might be you even know her. The fine continental maid whose beauty's only eclipsed by a guile in commerce. You wouldn't mind, would you? Not at all. Just be sure to tell her that it's always a pleasure doing business. I hear you ended up delivering all three stones. Thanks to this lump, I sometimes wonder what I pay you for. Speaking of which, I, uh... I, I, I still haven't been paid last month's wages. Oh! So you remember what's owed to you, then? Get your ass behind that disc of yours and don't get up before those ledges are square. Right away! I've seen that before. You yeah, have, yeah. Plenty of times. It was the only goblet Sid ever used. Either out of habit, or because the filthy soul couldn't be bothered to find a clean one. I knew so little about him. Like most people. Martha and the Dame both seem to have fond memories of him. <laughs> I bet they do. How long did you know Sid before he... Before he died. Twenty summers, give or take. Back in the day, I was a purser on a trade ship, which is where I met him. He bought passage to, I oh, forget where. And having nothing better to do on the long nights, we set up drinking island rum till the morning bell dragged me back to my duties. Quit my post not long after that on account of making a fine maiden's belly fat. But me and Sid stayed close, promising we'd one day sail the seas again. That was before fate stepped in and said she was having none of it. The magic woke inside my son soon after his first name day, and there was no hiding his neck. Couldn't you and your family have? My family? 
were the ones who summoned the constable. Wanted the monster taken away. I couldn't turn my back on him. Forget what I felt. And I couldn't for the life of me understand how they could. Luckily, Sid was of the same mind as me. It was him who stood beside me when all I wanted was to tear the whole world down. Him who cried for me when I had no tears left of my own. Him who swore he'd do everything he could to stop it from happening again. And he was true to his word, too. Left the Royal Army once and for all. His ranks, his ribbons, gone. Just like that. Threw away everything he had. All to right a wrong that no one else had the courage to face. I knew then I'd follow that man to the ends of the earth. was always too clever for his own good, was Sid. Saw the world for what it really was, while the rest of us were content to go along with the lie we were shown. And it can't have been easy, bearing that burden alone. But he didn't let it stop him. He never lost faith in what he believed was right. And that gave us faith in him. Faith he'd steer us true. So I swore on myself that I'd always be right behind him, ready to catch the stubborn sod if ever he should fall. But I couldn't even do that. Ignore me, just the ramblings of a tired old man. Leave that lot. I'll tidy it up in a bit. This. This is Sid's handwriting. Dear Otto, I may be drunk, but I wanted you to know this place would be fucked without you. Love you, you old grumpy old sod. This note. Hmm? What about it? Sid was right. Without you, we all be lost. He should have bloody well said so then. Just once. Before he went. <laughs> but then, why would he? Him, or anyone? I'd only have told him to piss off. You're wrong, though. Both of you. It was never just me keeping the hideaway afloat. It was all of us. I just shoved people in the right direction. I barely seem to be able to do that anymore. Would you rather go where the helm? <laughs> well, maybe I've got a few more years left in me. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that, Otto. 
Before you go, Sid would have wanted you to have this. But that... This will do me just fine. Thanks for the ray of sunshine. I'll see if I can't pay you back. Already have. I wasn't expecting you back, so... Here you are. Best of luck out there, Sid. Mid told me she was building a ship. Is that the thing Tomes helped? I noticed you and Togel had gone off somewhere. Took him for a walk, did you? <laughs> you could say that. So, Molly's leftovers weren't good enough, eh? That'll teach me for treating you like you're still a pup. <coughs> all right, all right, no need to shout. Now I know what you're after, I can see about getting some in. Speaking of which, I brought one for later. Can I leave it with you? You can, eh? I'm nice like that. In return, you can thank Tomes for me. The bloody know-it-all. I was just on my way to see him. And what can I do for you? I don't know many fleshers who deal in cuts that size. 
that doesn't mean I don't know some. Go on, then. You're rubbing me blind, you know. Come again. Oh, don't. I'm not much bothered either way. Back, are you? The same for you, dear. Not bad, if I do say so myself. Clive, were you able to locate your quarry? We were indeed, Lawsman. You pointed us in exactly the right direction. And Torgal's been a very happy hound ever since. Very good, very good. Lady Karen sends her thanks, by the way, for your part in solving the mystery. Ah, but that reminds me. After your last visit, I found myself pondering Torgal's talents. Do you recall our conversation concerning Lady Jill's role in Torgal's transformation? About how she somehow woke the power within him? Precisely that. A reasonable conclusion, I thought. But one which raised certain questions in my mind. You see, the Fenrir of legend served Shiva and Shiva alone. And while the powers attributed to him are certainly impressive, the records imply they are somewhat different in nature to those you described Torgal as having used. What are you suggesting? That Torgal may be the beneficiary of more than one icon's power. Consider that in addition to Lady Jill, he has served as a loyal companion to you, your brother, and even the late Sid. In short, the icons hitherto near at hand, or should I say at poor, have been diverse and plenty. And that number has only grown as the realm's dominance have fallen to your sword. One can but speculate as to how all of this has affected Torgal. He has seemed more... fierce of late. And if I am not mistaken, he will grow fiercer still. We are fortunate indeed to be able to count him amongst our allies and not our adversaries. <laughs> oh. He's more than an ally. He's a friend. 